Welcome back to Maritime Morning. What a beautiful day. Clear skies, clean air, spring day. Perfect day to be talking about an anti-idling bylaw. HRM is talking about this. There is a bylaw in place right now for municipal employees. It prohibits folks that work for HRM taking municipal vehicles through drive throughs So you can't sit there at your Tim's in your municipal vehicle and let your car idle. Do you think this is something that we should adopt as a bylaw for everybody? Or... Is it more reasonable just to have people use their common sense? Ron Zima is the chair and the founder of the Children's Clean Air Network. It is an organization that is dedicated to anti-idling. And he joins us in the studio today. Hi, Ron. Uh, uh, not anti. We're not anti-anything. <laughs> we're, we're, we're idle-free for our kids. Okay, so I've got to adjust my language then, don't uh, I? That's right. Okay, it, it is idle-free. For our kids. Okay, so that is not against idling. It is for idle freeness. That's right. Okay. so Words are important, Jordy. You know that. I know that. As a, as a former radio guy, you know that too. Mm. Tell me what the organization is set up to do. What is it you're trying to achieve? The Children's Clean Air Network is a movement. So uh, our call to action is simple. It's go idle free for our kids. And uh, the rationale is simple. I mean, who has the, the most to lose from poor air quality and uh, who's going to be uh, around the longest? Who's going to need the planet the longest? Somebody that's five or somebody that's 50? So, um, you know, when we say go idle free for our kids, uh, it simply means turn off your engine when you're parked and it makes sense. And quite honestly, what we're doing is uh, simply partnering with uh, uh, organizations to get out some simple, consistent messaging that's going to inspire the public, that's going to create a tipping point on this finally. Because quite honestly, Jordy, there's, uh, there's hundreds of anti-idling campaigns right across North America. Major towns and cities are all trying to do something about this. Making towns idle-free. That's right. I'm getting the language. So are you... A- you're not a lobby group per se. Like, I mean, you're, you're not. Are you not uh, uh, going after governments and telling them to enact legislation or or to uh, put bylaws into place? Are you? No. Or are you? No. No. Not at all. No. No. Okay. So, the, but the result of some of this work that you've done obviously right. is at impact because here we have HRM uh, doing this now, and I, w- I want to get to that in a moment. But t- you know, I was I was surprised to see you've got. Um, You've got automobile dealerships. That's right. <clears throat> Pardon me, getting on board with this. Yeah. What What's the What's the I, I know there's a direct connection between what you're doing, but what's Why is it in their interest uh, to to push this as well? Well, we've got. Uh, you, you take a look at somebody like Al McPhee, who's a uh, someone who's looked to as a respected leader in the automotive industry, and um, Al's got grandkids. And, and basically what happens is when you start thinking about the kids and the simple things that we can be doing today that add up to a lot, um, you know, it's not hard to enlist the likes of Al McPhee because he runs a business that's uh, based on good customer service and getting the best information to their customers on, on how to best use their vehicles. Mm-hmm. So yesterday morning I was uh, with the, uh, the entire service team at uh, McPhee Chevrolet and uh, they're pretty much on board. Uh, this to- makes total sense. And basically all it is is connecting the dots. Uh, just to, you know, on GM's website right now, it basically says that uh, uh, one minute of, of idle time is about really all you need, and then away you go, because today's cars are like uh, uh, computers on wheels. Mm-hmm. They're finely tuned uh, machines today uh, that uh, need very little idle time, and um, so it's, it's, it's perfectly, it fits perfectly with the philosophy of a McPhee Chevrolet to get that information out to their customers because it's the best care of their vehicle. Okay, Let, let's let go through some of the, I mean, the practical implications of all sure. of this. Right, uh, and y- you're taking it from the economic point of view. So when you're talking about people idling, where are you talking? You're not, you're not talking about them idling at stoplights, right? No, not what, at all. What do you, where are you talking about people idling? Well, basically, it's, uh, it's the no-brainer stuff. We like to call it the, uh, le- let me frame it to you this way. Going idle-free is a big business. Um, What's the 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 price of the pump today here in Halifax? Buck thirty point five a liter. Now this is a big uh, business opportunity. The no brainer idling market in Canada is about three billion dollars a year. Let me frame that for you. That's people 
whether they're in their, their vehicles waiting for 20 minutes outside the grocery store, waiting for their wife, or like I used to do, because I used to be the Canadian idler. I used to run my car all the time. <laughs> I was the guy I was trying to reach seven years ago. Okay, so um, so I was, you know, I was uh, burning probably 300 bucks worth of fuel every winter just by sitting and letting my car run in, in the driveway. So there's, there's the personal vehicle, and then there's the big corporate fleets that are grappling with this as well. Uh, the corporate fleets like Pepsi, Coke, UPS, Perlator in Canada, it has gone idle free for the last 10 years and is saving hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars okay. to the bottom line. Okay. Uh, t talk to me like I'm four here, because sure. <clears throat> I don't I don't understand when you say when they're going idle free. W when like you mean that means that it's simply pulling up and they're making a delivery for, for like for pure later. That means they turn the vehicle off instead of leaving it running. Wouldn't they do that anyway? Like, I mean, doesn't that mean <laughs> you would think? You would think, Jordy, but take a look. The when last you... time I left my car running outside a bank on Spring Garden Road, somebody took it. So, <laughs> so I stopped doing that. But I, I mean, I, it's what? So these, these fleets are what? They leave their cars running and, and when they're doing deliveries or they're doing work? Well, here's a challenge for you. And I'm going to challenge your listeners, too. When you, after the show today, go and take a look at what happens around your city or town. You'll be amazed. It's it's amazing wh where people idle and why they idle. It, the no-brainer stuff. I'm talking about not in traffic. We're talking about when you're parked, you're going nowhere, you're waiting for somebody. You're the guy in the in the corporate van eating his lunch in the grocery store parking lot for 45 minutes, leaving the vehicle running. Right? Really? Absolutely. Take really? A, absolutely. Take a look around. This is a big issue that's just below the surface that really all it is is awareness and inspiration. Yeah, right? I suppose. Yeah, you know, I was just I was just thinking about you know, going in the summertime. Why would you do that? But then keep people are keeping their air conditioners running right in their cars. Yeah. And, and that's one of those myths. Right. We've got to kill these myths that, uh, you know, just try this. The next time it's a hot day uh, and you're parked. Roll your windows down. Get a cross breeze, right? You're going to be there for maybe 20 minutes, um, you know. Okay, so how much, how much money can somebody save in a year then? I mean, really? This is amazing. This is one of the best parts. If you take, uh, I'm going to use a stat from uh, Natural Resources Canada. This is the official federal government position on this. They say that if every light-duty vehicle that's car and truck in Canada went idle free for three minutes, the no-brainer stuff uh, a day. That would add up to 630 million liters of fuel in the course of a year. That's about a billion bucks at today's pump price, okay? We would argue, and we'll get you to take a look around today, that that three minutes is probably a lot more. I would say, just based on my own bad habits from seven, eight years ago, I was easily no-brainer idling for 15, 20 minutes a day anyway. So it's a huge, huge market. If you, as a personal, uh, uh, you know, personal vehicle driver, uh, were to go idle free for 10 minutes a day at today's pump price, it's about 250 bucks in your pocket that you're going to keep. Really? Absolutely. I don't know if everybody's going to uh, agree with this, but I do want people to get have a chance to talk about it because HRM is debating this. And right. Four zero five six thousand one eight seven seven eight zero one eight two five five. I'm talking with Ron Zima. He is with the Children's Idle Free. No, 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 no. Sorry, <laughs> Idle Free for our kids. Sorry. Right. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, you know, you know what? You see this thing up here? This yeah. has been in the studio since I got here, right? Oh, that's tremendous. That's, our, that's one of our tailgate magnets featuring Rachel. Yes, our poster yeah, girl. Idle yeah. free for our kids. Yeah. Don't blame me. I can't even remember our phone number for day to day. <laughs> so, uh, idle free for our kids. Ron Zim is in the uh, studio with us this morning to talk about this. David, uh, what do you think? Is, is this a good idea? Are you for going idle free? Well, uh, I agree with him wholeheartedly, Jordy. And uh, why wouldn't you be? Uh, there's no room for uh, argument with this gentleman as far as idle free. Just look at the Tim Horton lineups out to the road on a beautiful sunny day because they're too lazy to go inside. That's the biggest thing is obesity uh, around here, and it's because they sit in their cars. And uh, why walk into an empty? I drive by so many places. The parking lot's empty, and the lineup for the drive throughs out to the road because they're too lazy to walk inside. And that's what's wrong. You, they, they're building 
they're building restaurants and and and, and convenience uh, coffee shops, and the first thing they think about is a drive-through and put a little uh, a donut shop in the middle of the parking lot uh, that's too small to hold any cars. So that, that's that's if you looked at it, at the at the at the way they design things in the future, it's fast, fast, fast. Get you in, get you out. So let's do a drive-through and forget about a parking lot. Another thing is diesel is the worst. And if you did the research on diesel emission, look at the Brinks trucks that go and pick up for everybody, uh, businesses, let's say, during the day. They stop in front, they leave their diesel truck idling while they go inside, and the gentleman sits inside the truck with it idling, and where's he idling? In front of the main door. Not down the end of the parking lot, in front of the main door where people are walking in and out, is a diesel truck idling. And, and to finish off, who's the worst? The Halifax Regional Police. Did you ever see a policeman sitting in the car without the car that isn't on them? They're, they're, they're the worst offenders. So kudos to you, sir. Uh, you know what? This is what we need. We need people to look up, but we're too stupid and silly around here. Um, we, well, we, don't, we don't sit back and look. We just It's all about convenience in HRM. It's all about, you know what? I'll pay a dollar thirty for gas. I'm not going to put up a big stink about it. Dollar thirty three. Dollar thirty three today, David. Thanks very much for your call. I, I wonder if we had an idle free bylaw, if the cops would actually have to go out and uh, enforce it. Mike joins us this morning. Mike, what do you, what do you think about the idea of a bylaw here in HRM? I think it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. It's another pile of uh, law that they have to shove down our throats unwillingly. Uh, you know, if you're the type of person that's a uh, tree hugger and environmentally conscious, uh, then by all means, stop idling your vehicle. But, uh, you know, it, it's it's just something else. What are they going to do? Have the idle police going around now? So is your, uh, is your you know, argument here about the bylaw or about the about the idling itself? My my guess is that you're simply saying that it's it's over legislating something that should be just common sense. Well, it's a little bit of both with me. Uh, you know, I, I, it just goes back to the same thing over and over again, that there's more nitpicking foolishness laws that we have to be conscious of every day. Not to mention, because I don't idle my vehicle for 10 minutes, uh, you know, sitting in a parking lot waiting for somebody on a sweltering hot day, uh, you're running the air conditioning, you know, for 15 minutes while you're waiting for somebody to come out of a mall, uh, you know, now somebody's going to be telling me that I have to shut my vehicle off. And, you know, just because I shut my vehicle off after five minutes doesn't mean that I'm going to save the world. Uh, you know, the other thing, too, that I find about this is, so now they're going to have a law so I can idle my vehicle for five minutes without getting in trouble. I can shut my vehicle off, turn it back on, and go another five minutes. That's ridiculous. Okay, Mike, let, let's uh, take a few points up with Ron on this one. You're not arguing for a bylaw here. No. you. I mean, that's not your point. But this is why I, th I think where the confusion comes in, yes. is that the notion of going idle-free mm. is fine. What we're hearing here is is a bylaw or a piece of legislation even manageable? Mm. Do you, what do you think? Okay, well, you know, we subscribe to the Abraham Lincoln principle. And, uh, you know, with the public on your side, nothing can fail. Without the public, nothing can succeed. Uh, our position, Jordy, uh, with the Children's Cleaner Network and our mantra, Go Idle Free for Our Kids, is we're not anti-car. We're not anti drive through we're pro-common sense. Our goal is to be seen as a positive choice by the majority of people. Bylaws, by and large, uh, wherever they've been passed, haven't worked. We appreciate the goal they're trying to achieve. But, you know, if 80% of the public has been sold on the idea, and this, this gentleman's a perfect example, you know, uh, letters to the editor, uh, to the Herald, uh, over the, the last day have, uh, have uh, been a good example of how uh, much of the public is dead set against the idea of a bylaw. Mm -hmm. as, as much as we agree with the goal that it's trying to achieve, uh, many of them, uh, you know, you know, in the case, how, how do you enforce a bylaw where we have 350,000 light-duty cars and trucks in Halifax? So, uh, and the City of Toronto is a perfect example. Oldest bylaw in the books in Canada, 1996. In 2009, they wrote 88 tickets. <laughs> Idling goes on largely unchanged. So, you know, our, our whole point is inspire the public. We need peer leaders, big, big, uh, you know, I mean, big uh, uh, fleets within HRM, and those will show and inspire the people how to do this. Ron Zeman is with the Children's Clean Air Network. They're promoting Idle Free for Our Kids. We'll have more of your calls. And the question, should we have a bylaw for not idling? Four zero five six thousand one eight seven seven eight zero one eight two five five. More in a moment here on Maritime Morning. 
Maritime Morning with Jordy Morgan will return in a moment on News 95.7. Professional or not, we're all in the lawn care business. This year, use what the pros use. RTF, water saver grass seed. Longer, deeper roots mean less water. That saves you money. Less fertilizer, less fuss, and tougher. Get a beautiful green lawn that's self-repairing and more insect resistant. Use what the pros use. RTF, water saver grass seed. The only seed you'll ever need. Visit rtfwatersavercanada.com. RTF, water saver grass seed is available at camp and other fine garden centers. A message from Michael Ignatieff, leader of the Liberal Party of Canada. You already know what Stephen Harper's priorities are. $30 billion for fighter jets. We Liberals have different ideas and a platform that will change priorities in Ottawa. At the core of it is what we call the Family Pack, and it's designed to help families get ahead. You can read the plan at Liberal.ca. Because you deserve a lot better from the government you pay for. Authorized by the registered agent for the Liberal Party of Canada. Attention business travelers, experience a new level of comfort in the heart of Bayers Lake. Comfort Hotel Halifax invites you to their open house this Saturday and Sunday from 2 to 4. You could win a weekend getaway in one of their executive suites plus dinner at Canadiana. Contemporary, elegant, and close to everything, Comfort Hotel Halifax features a beautiful multifunction room, perfect for meetings, conferences, and seminars. Don't miss the open house this weekend. Comfort Hotel Halifax, now open at 88 Chain Lake Drive, Bayers Lake. Was it Robert Frost who said, good fences make good neighbors? Smart man, Frost. There are times when you want to keep the kids in and times when you want to keep the kids out. It doesn't matter why, everyone in our neighborhood needs a good sturdy fence with curb appeal. McDonald Fencing has been installing fences for nearly 40 years. Their vinyl fences and railings are the best you can buy and have a lifetime transferable warranty. Nice touch. Never paint or scrape again. For enduring beauty in your outdoor living room, visit mcdonaldfencing.ca. You toss and turn at night and then feel tired all day. You're not alone, but there is help. Call Medigas if you've been diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. They understand the condition and know how to help you manage it. Medigas coordinates with your physician to ensure you get the treatment you need so you aren't living your life in a mental haze. It can make a difference. Medigas. Breathe well. Sleep well. Live well. In Halifax, call 468-7725 or visit Medigas.com. Cast an informed vote. All the election info you need is right here. Right here. News 95.7. This is Maritime Morning with Jordy Morgan on News 95.7. Welcome back to Maritime Morning. We are talking about the anti-idling bylaw that is being proposed or debated at uh, City Council. And we want to hear from you at 405 1877 Ron Seema from the Children's Clean Air Network is with us in the studio this morning. And Ryan joins us on the phone. Hi, Ryan. What do you think of a bylaw for anti-idling in Metro? Oh, I don't think it should be done at all. Um, I perfectly agree with the message for idling. Yeah, I mean, it, but it is common sense. I and mean, I don't think people should be idling around pe places where there's sensitive, like, sensitive areas, like where there's children around or anything else. But, like, putting a bylaw on there, it's not going to change anything. People are going to still do what they want to. They're going to still idle their car. Uh, you're just going to make a lot of people angry doing that. And it's going to force change. I think it'll force a little bit of change. But uh, it's not going to make a huge drastic movement. I think doing more research into it, which what people are doing, than showing the causes of it, of what uh, idling can do to the earth, which they already have been doing. And I'm a, I'm a great believer in what technology can do for what science can do anyway. I mean, look, look where we're going to be from five years from now with all the environmentally uh, clean cars we got now. I'm sure that eventually we're going to come out with a very clean burning car maybe in the next few years. Uh, I'm going to fix people's habits now, but... Uh, like I said, I think technology is going to save it. I think a bylaw is just going to be useless. Ryan, thanks very much for your call this morning. But, you know, the, the other question here that I think we have to look at is, you know, if you do not have an incentive for people not to idle, right? I'm not entirely sure that you're going to be able to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. I want to get George here just in on the conversation, sure. Ron. Hi, George. Uh, what do you think? Is, is this uh, a good idea, bad idea? Do you think that people would, will actually pay attention unless there's a law in place? Um, for Jordy, um, I don't really necessarily think we need a bylaw. Like uh, a lot of callers said, we've got enough um, laws to tell us what to do. 
but we definitely need to smarten up stop piling our vehicles. And I think maybe if you're standing there someday and you see a guy with car idle and Tim Hortons walk up and say, you know, something like, are you that lazy you can't get out and have a cup of, you know, walk in and get a cup of coffee? Shut your vehicle off. You're killing my kids. You're killing me. That's maybe what we got to start doing. But we don't need a law, I don't think. George, thanks for your call. I, I wonder about this, Ron, because, right. um, you know, my thinking on this is, you know what, this is a great idea, but it's it's the same as driving with a cell phone, right? Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's all about matter. It's it's danger. There's a danger that is inherent is, you know, whatever that relative danger is in terms of letting your car idle. Right. Uh, so if there is a danger and it is a health issue, and would a law not simply serve as a reminder to people? Uh, you, <laughs> that's debatable because, you know, people are uh, set in their ways. It's all about salesmanship. It's all about selling the public. It's all about the Abe Lincoln principle, as I mentioned before. You know, we have a strategy to help save hundreds of thousands of dollars of fuel across Halifax. You know, our experience and research shows that the public will support something like this if, here's a couple of points, they're led by example, real stories. So peer leaders like Ambassadors Grey Line, which I'd like to talk about in just a second. Positive and hopeful, not preachy. We're not preaching, okay? Practical, how it affects their kids, their pocketbook. They emotionally buy in, and if they're reminded. Now, from our experience, an emotional sell by kids to grown-ups works wonders. And, uh, yeah, you know, the public is also looking for real peer leadership on this. You know, uh, oftentimes uh, the feeling is, well, you go idle free first, right? And then we'll follow. Uh, but uh, kids make the connection and make it stick. You know, as soon as the ambassador's drivers understood how important this was to kids, that this is what they were learning in school, uh, senior executives uh, uh, there and their drivers were just, uh, you know, wow. Uh, we, they they were flipped into evangelists for this because they were going, you know, this is really important to kids. The, the kids are learning all about this in school. It's one of the hot-button issues in the schools, uh, vehicle emissions around their schools, hockey rinks, libraries, everything else, that once that connection is made, the drivers quickly buy in and habits change. Tracy, what do you think about this? Do you think that we need a bylaw in Metro to uh, stop people from sitting in their cars and letting them idle? Tracy? Oh, sorry, are you talking? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. You kind of cut out there. Um, I, I agree with the, the, no, the no idling. I guess my, my argument about it is what is the difference of sitting in traffic for 20 minutes idling than three or four minutes, maybe five minutes in the drive through My other point is why isn't the province jumping on board like it does in Ontario and they have emission testing every two years on vehicles? So you think that this is that's a better solution is to ensure that the vehicles are actually in compliance with emission levels than uh, making drivers compliant with a uh, with an anti idling law. Um, this time of year, you notice even more because the weather's getting nicer. Your windows are down in your in your car, and you're driving along or you're sitting in traffic, and the emissions the emissions coming from other cars, like the exhaust and stuff coming from other cars, seems to bother you more when you're sitting in traffic, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that's an inter that's an interesting take on that. Thanks very much for your call, Tracy. Uh, is that is that sound like is that something that you support the, the emission testing or? Do, absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, commonplace in many uh, jurisdictions elsewhere I in North America. But you know what we're really talking about is inspirational change on one of the lowest hanging fruit out there. This is the equivalent, you know, turning your car off when you're parked and not going somewhere uh, is the equivalent of uh, turning your light switch off at your house yeah, you, when you're not in the room. Right? You know, the, yeah, I, I agree with that. But, you know, sometimes, you know, we live in a cold climate here. There, There's a market out there for, like, car starters, right? You start your car at 7 o'clock in the morning, go out at 7.30, and your car is Jordy, warm. Jordy, i got to tell you a story. Build I'm, a garage. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from one of the coldest cities on the planet, Edmonton, Alberta. Got to tell you a story, okay? Yeah. Uh, this past Christmas, uh, I had to take back a pair of slacks to West Edmonton Mall. I was with my half-brother who lives in Edmonton. And we were in my car uh, rental, and I said, "Look, uh, I've got to. Uh, you're going to wait here in the car for 20 minutes. It's minus 20. About 6,000 cars in the lot at West Edmonton Mall, and uh, about every fourth car, fifth car is abandoned 
idling or somebody's in the car what, waiting, they, what, idling. What, they just left them running? They left them running, <laughs> locked. They're in the oh mall doing their shopping, okay? <laughs> so you've got about 6,000 vehicles. I would say at least a quarter, at, at least a fifth of them were left on, okay? These plumes, That's crazy. plumes of smoke, okay? So I say to Chad, look, I'm going to be gone for about 20 minutes. I'm going to leave you here, but I'm going to shut the car off. And he was looking at me like, are you nuts, man? I'm going to freeze to death, you know? And I said... Just watch, okay? I was gone for about 20 minutes. Came back, opened the car door. He was on his cell phone, texting away, humming along. And I said, so, so what do you think? He says, this is amazing. He looked around, looked at all the plumes of smoke. And, you know, we were thinking about all the people. The light bulb went off in his head. So that's one of the biggest misconceptions. We've got to get rid of these idling myths that, you know, today's cars today are engineered to be uh, airtight. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're almost pressurized today. And uh, so you can keep the heat within your vehicle for long periods of time, even at 20 below on a, on a, on a uh, warm day. Just roll your windows down. Just try it. Just try it. And uh, you might be surprised. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I wish you well in your mission here. Uh, but it should be interesting to see what happens with HRM if they do.